Nothing is working in this studio. Nothing. Welcome to College Football's Peek Around the Corner with your host, Greg Flugar. We cover everything in college football because we love everything in college football. And if you do as well, please subscribe to our ever-growing channel. Smash the like button if you like our content. Share the video with your family and friends. Welcome into the studio. That does not work. We sit on the corner of Keith Jackson Parkway in Kurt Gowdy Avenue. Do not be afraid. If I was you, I would be afraid. But do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, PATC community. Do not be afraid to be a legend with your comments in the chat and with your phone calls later in the show. My deepest apology. I have absolutely no idea what's going on. We've talked about it before. The host of this college football YouTube channel is an idiot. I don't know what's going on. YouTube would not save what I was doing. So it kept reverting back and then I couldn't get anything to work. I had to shut everything down, pop everything back up, pray that it would work. Hold smokes a legendary start I tell you what um did I screw up or I don't I have no idea what's going on hopefully hopefully we're okay uh we have a stack show tonight um I'm a little bit off here because we were ready to go at six o'clock seven o'clock eastern so I apologize to you all we're going to go through uh, a monologue here 
Um, I'll get to your comments again. If you're new to the show, please subscribe. If you like the content, smash the like button. If you like the content, if you want to support the show, through a donation, a super chat, put down your comment, hit the dollar sign. We'll get to it as fast as possible. I just want to do a quick, just a very quick recap on Pat Forte's article in Sports Illustrated yesterday. We did episode 349. We dropped it this morning, late morning. So I'm not going to go through the whole, I'm, I'm not going to go through the article at all. I just want to do a, a little, little bit of a recap. Uh, if you want to go through that article, see what I have to say, go to episode 349. We're going to be talking just a little bit about Alabama, Michigan. A little bit about Bama and the Wolverines. It's getting a little bit, a um, lot of drama behind the scenes, even before they get on the football field. Uh, then we're going to go, well, we're going to talk about, now, we've been talking about this, right? Miami can't stay silent forever. Clemson can't stay silent forever on what Florida State did. He can't. You're going to have to, you're going to be in front of that microphone sooner rather than later. And of course, with the bowl game today, Miami Hurricanes versus Rutgers Scarlet Knights. The athletic director asked, was asked a question, had to say something. Um, I think he played it pretty cool. I think he played it pretty cool. But um, look, Miami, of course, they're interested observer and what's going on between Florida State and the ACC. And as we've reported here, we don't believe they're going to jump in when it comes to going into the courts because we think their president is going to be real conservative in his actions. But again, Miami has done work, just like Clemson, just like, of course, Florida State. We believe there's enough interest. They believe they have the perception that they have enough interest out there to proceed if Florida State gets the right verdict, the right price point. And we'll go in that in a little bit. Um, we're going to go through an article by Adam Lichtenstein from the Sun Sentinel that he put out soon after the athletic director of Miami commented before the bowl game. Miami Rutgers, Rutgers won first bowl victory since 2014. So congratulations to Greg Schiano. Congratulations to Rutgers, the fan base. They got a big time running back. Big time running back, Manungai. Manungai, number five. He's a load. He's coming back next year. He made the announcement before the bowl game. Rutgers, I think they're going to have to still. They still haven't brought in a quarterback in the transfer portal. I know they're looking at a bunch of guys. I know they're looking at Ethan Kaliak Manis. I don't know if Wimsat can take the next step. Don't know if he can do it. Rooted for the young guy, but I don't know if he can take the next step. So I think they're going to still be looking some. There's some late entry into the quarterback portal that Rutgers might be interested in. So let's go. I want to thank everybody, first of all, for coming on in uh, early in this uh, episode, uh, live show, December 28th. Randy Taylor, we're back. Jamie Thornton. John Kurtz going to be happy. Wildcats up 21 to 10 at halftime. In fact, I'm trying to get that game on here. I had it on. I had to turn everything off. Not a smooth start. Not a smooth start for a peek around the corner. Let's see if I can get that working. Probably not. Um, third time is a charm. Thank you, Opie. <laughs> Better late than never. Smash, share, confirm. The Moen Show, Michigan stole your internet. It was not an internet issue. Jen, Mrs. Mrs. Seminole back in the house. So glad to see future conference partner Rutgers beat those candy canes. Ooh, the elbow has been thrown early on to Miami. No, I don't think it was an internet. Just YouTube would not take 
It looked like, I don't know. I don't understand what happened. Don't understand what happened. Greg's video skills is like Miami's bowl performance. But I came back. Miami didn't quite came. Crystal ball, what are you doing? What is he doing? That, that drive when they scored the touchdown, that's great and everything. But you left two timeouts in your pocket. You only had 30-some seconds to go, 25, I don't even know. Before you got the onside kick, you got to save some time just in case you do score and get the onside. What do you, in fact, I think, didn't Miami leave the game with two timeouts? And <laughs> you can't be running check downs. Roll your quarterback out, just throw it deep. You need a miracle, so give you a chance to get the miracle. Give yourself a chance to get the miracle. But those times, I don't know what they were doing. Call a timeout, Crystal Ball. Save some time on the clock. I don't get it. I, his coaching just makes me infuriated. And I'm not a Miami fan. I, I can't. If I was a Hurricane fan tonight, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. They lost Colby Jones, the wide receiver. I know they've gotten some big-time guys in the portal. They're still looking for a quarterback. We thought yesterday, we put on an early peak episode, we thought Miami, they were in line to get Cameron Ward. I don't know anymore. It's just, things are not working. It's early. I, what's his second season at Miami? So he's going to get a third one. I don't know. I um, I don't know. That was Christopher Shannon. It's Crystal Ball. He did the same bold head coach in Oregon. Oregon fans, Warren Duquesne fans. It just, it didn't seem right. It did not seem right. Jamie Thornton, how many games has Miami lost this year? You know, I don't know. I mean, Again, did coaching lose the game today? Miami was up without a lot of guys. Everyone's without a lot of guys. Um, but they should have given themselves a better chance to pull off the miracle. But they didn't even give them really... How do you, how do you walk away? How do you walk off the field with two timeouts in your pocket? How do you do it... I don't I don't understand it. Um, this is normal for Crystal Ball. Lee Gold Gators is in the house. Okay, so Pat Forty. Uh, we talked about his article. Uh, first of all, now let's just get through that article real quick. Again, we did episode 349 on it. If you want to watch the episode, please do go to the YouTube channel, pick out episode 349. He talked about the brazen Florida State, the greedy Florida State. Not using common sense Florida State, just like Texas and Oklahoma. He went through all of his, uh, again, read the whole article. We provide a link in episode 349. But the one piece that he was missing was the true motivation for Florida State. He never got it in that whole article. The true motivation for Florida State is not to be greedy, to not to pocket a bunch of cash. It's their motivation. The Seminoles motivation is to be able to compete at the highest level of college football and college athletics, not just college football, which is the most important, drives the bus, brings in the most revenue. But these athletic directors, they also want to take care of all the other sports. Part of each of the fan base want the other sports to be taken care of. There are boosters out there who are only interested in giving money to certain lesser, lesser supported Olympic sports in the athletic department. The athletic director has to take care of all of it because he has interest knocking on his door for all of it. Football is the most important, but other things are important as well. And um, look, 
Congratulations to the ACC for continuing to win national championships in all sports. That was in the article. Florida State has $160 million athletic budget. Florida State pays Mike Novell $8 million. A whole lot of money, right? So why do they need more? Why do they need more? They want to be able to compete. The world is changing and it's changing fast. Texas and Oklahoma. Texas left to the SEC when Texas was making $200 million in the athletic department. When they made the announcement to go from the Big 12 to the SEC, they were making $200 million. So why did they leave? Why did Oklahoma leave the Big 12 to get to the SEC? Why did USC call the Big 10? It's all the same reasons. Because the courts are telling the NCAA that you have to change. Student athletes are going to have to be treated more as a professional. NIL. The, the, the universities have to treat their student athletes the same way they treat their students. If a cello player from the university, Florida State University wants to go on YouTube and teach people how to play the cello and people are willing to, to spend money on her or his YouTube channel to learn how to play the cello, that student can do so. Student athletes have the same rights in name, image, and likeness. The courts have legitimized that. The courts have also ruled against the NCAA over and over again, and they're going to continue to do so. While at the same time, giving a little bit more leeway, a little bit more legitimacy to conferences. And I think they're going to give more legitimacy to conferences as time goes on. Once the conferences and schools start making deals, start raising the compensation le uh, level of the student athletes. That is what's happening. The money gap that everybody talks about, that Pat Forty touched upon, it hasn't even started yet. Yeah, there is a money gap. There is a money gap. But the huge money gap hasn't even started yet. It, 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 or it has barely started. The Big Ten, this is their first year with the new media deal. SCC's media deal begins July 1st, 2024. The money gap is now going to explode as Florida State is explaining to Pat Forty and everybody else. But it's not just the money gap that is exploding. It's the ability, the ability of the front porch of these universities, the athletic departments, to use that money gap to their advantage. It's, it's not just about building another water fountain in your athletic village. It's about paying your student athletes more money, more compensation. This is why Texas and Oklahoma called the SEC. It wasn't greed, it was the will to compete at the highest level. Same with USC. Same with Florida State. It is not greed. It's not, it's not being, they want to compete at the highest level. That's it. And you know what? It's, it definitely is not about greed. Look, Florida State, if they're able to get out of the ACC, and let's just, Let's just throw out a number. Let's just throw out a number. $280 million. I could be off $200 million either way. But let's just use $280 million. Florida State, what are they going to make in the Big Ten or the SEC in the next five years, six years, if they're able to get out of the ACC? Are they going to be able to make $350 million more than they are now if you, if you count it all up together? What Florida State wants is they want to be able to get out of the ACC as soon as possible. Because the future is not just about the next six years. The future is about the next 20, 30, 40 years. And they want out of the ACC because, first of all, there's strong enough interest. There's a big enough value for Florida State. So they should be in the Big Ten and the SEC. 
They want to max out their opportunity, their potential, just like everybody else. Everybody else. That's all they're doing. That's all they're trying to do. So it's not greed. It just isn't greed. Um, Brett Yormark, he was David versus Goliath. Big 12 was the underdog until October 30th, 2022. Big 12 was the underdog versus the Pac-12. But what happened on October 30, 2022? They struck the deal with ESPN and Fox. And soon, not soon, it took until July 27th. But we were reporting on it the whole way through. They were able to pull it from the Pac-12, not because they are greedy. It's because they want to get to the highest land possible as the Russian waters flow in. They want to get to the highest land possible. And the Big 12 did exactly that. And the Colorado, they saw that the Pac-12 was going to get flooded out. They leaped. They went to the Big 12. It's not about greed. It's about wanting to compete at the highest level possible for your university, for your student athletes, your fan base, your boosters. That's what this is all about. Geez, I said I was only going to take a small time on Pat Forday's article. I just spent a whole bunch of time on it. I apologize. But when I read that, and this guy's a smart guy. I, I read him. I enjoy him. I'm not trying to attack anybody. But we're still... People out there are still not grasping what's going on. Florida State does grasp it. Are they going to be successful? I don't know what the judge is going to say. I can't even turn on this YouTube channel on without making a bunch of mistakes. I have no idea what's going to happen in the courts of Tallahassee and North Carolina. But Florida State understands what's going on when it comes to the change in landscape. So they're going for it. They are going for it. Now, Two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, I would be the first one to say, oh, it's too risky. It's too risky for Florida State to do what they're doing. Ah, can't go in the court, spend all that money. They can't get out of the ground of rights. Well, I've changed my tune. It's risky not to try to do something. It's more risky to sit there and have a death by a thousand paper cuts than to go for it right now, right now, to try to get a deal from the ACC. Anyways, uh, that's enough about Pat Forty. Um, I want to get on to the Miami thing. Uh, let's get to it. Let's get to it. I appreciate you all coming in. I do apologize for whatever happened at the start of this program. John D., thank you so much for the super chat. Thanks for all you do, sir. Thank you, Mr. Seminole. I appreciate it. I appreciate all your support, your incredible phone calls, you teaching us everything, giving us Florida State knowledge. I appreciate it very much. This is why we have a national college football show. We're learning constantly. And going into next year, with all these roster changes, portal, it's crazy. I'm going to be leaning on everybody here giving us a call in the chat about what they think is going to happen with their team next year and all the changes. Holy smokes. Thank you, John D., for your generosity and for your friendship. I appreciate it, sir. Let's get to... Um, let's get to... Um, let's get to it. First of all... Uh... Miami Athletic Director Dan Radakovich said, Miami is an interested observer with Florida State taking actions toward leaving the ACC. But right now, they are proud members of the ACC. So Miami's Athletic Director, before the bowl game, Remember, we said they're going to have to get up in the front of the mic sooner rather than later. And by the way, by the way, Clemson plays tomorrow morning. 
the Gator Bowl, Clemson versus Kentucky. Graham Death, he's going to be in front of that microphone early in the morning. I'm not sure what time. 10 o'clock Eastern, 10.30 Eastern, 11 o'clock Eastern time. He's going to be getting a question, right? So we'll see what he has to say. Matt Baker. Um, as all this, this is quoting here from again, Miami's athletic director, as all things continue to come up into the marketplace and what Florida State is looking to do, we'll be very, very interested observers. Okay. Now, before we get in to the article that Adam Lichtenstein wrote in the um, in the Sentinel, Sun Sentinel, we I want to take a step back here. Um, the last live show we did, we talked about movement in the Holy Smokes Theater. We talked, and the, and the movement was Miami. Hurricanes going up in the front row, sitting right next to North Carolina as Florida State and Clemson is on center stage. We believe that North Carolina is not going to be moving, not going to be following Florida State when it comes to filing something locally. They're going to wait. They're, we've talked about it. There's a lot of movement at North Carolina. Not everything is quite aligned they're going to be taking a more slower approach, watching what's going on at Florida State. They're, that's why they're in the front row. It's not because of value. Remember, we had Colorado all alone in the center of the stage in the Big 12 drama. Arizona was at, at the edge of the stage. Colorado was at the center of the stage because they're the act that's going on. They were the ones that were going to be the tip of the spear when it comes to movement. We talked about it for months, even before the big articles came out saying that was going on. We were reporting to you in the Holy Smokes Theater that Colorado had the center of the stage all to themselves. And Arizona was next on the edge of the stage. It's exactly how it went. So please don't take where you are in the Holy Smokes Theater as what schools are most valuable. Florida State, we had them at the center of the stage, along with Clemson. We'll get to Clemson later. Because we believe Florida State was going to be the first to move, take action, declare, and that's what they did. Miami, Florida, we had to move them to the first row, sitting along with North Carolina. We've been given information. It's highly controversial. People are DMing me. Some people are raking me over the coals. That's fine. That's what I'm here for, for you to rake me over the coals. I will say, uh, since our last Holy Smokes Theater, the information we've been given, it is the same. It is, and this is the information we gave. Um, Miami of Florida, if, look, there's enough interest. They're an interested observer, right? They got a decent shot. If the ACC implodes, Miami of Florida has a decent shot, decent shot, very good shot at finding a landing spot, SEC or the Big Ten, most likely the Big Ten. Now, they don't control their own destiny, right? They're not Notre Dame. They're not North Carolina. They are not Florida State. Not what we have been told. But they're in the first row. They will offer, they will get themselves available depending on how the Florida State situation goes versus the ACC. We, we were told uh, by more than one person separate Separate sources, completely separate worlds, saying that if it came down to it, if Notre Dame and North Carolina 
did not make themselves available for the Big Ten if Florida State was successful. For whatever reason, Notre Dame and North Carolina were not available for lots of different reasons. Then the best shot, the best get, it would probably be a Florida State-Miami combo into the Big Ten. And we told the reasons why. Miami of Florida doesn't have great fan participation. Miami of Florida doesn't have, <coughs> excuse me, a stadium on campus. Miami of Florida, their, their attendance is low. But Miami of Florida has a lot of things going for them. Academics, they, they, they go through the window, they go through the front door in the Big Ten. But they also have a unique and large market. And that's still important for the Big Ten. We believe, we've been told that Florida State would be in the corner of a Miami, Florida edition if Notre Dame and North Carolina were not available at the time. Now, I want to make something perfectly clear. And we've said this before over and over and over again. Fox Sports and even ESPN, they don't call all the shots. We've said this before. We've said it. They don't have total control. They don't. They really don't. And I know I, I've had a lot of people rake me over the coals when I've said that. They don't. It's going to come down to the Big Ten presidents voting, including a, 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 a university into the conference for hopefully the next 100 years. They're not going to let a media partner completely tell them what to do, just like they don't let AAU private club tell them what to do. Just like the SEC. Just because a media partner is in a school's corner is not an automatic into the door. Uh-uh. That's not how it works. But it is advantageous. It is important. It is something. As we said, Oregon and Washington, we're going to get into the Big Ten either in the next five months or five years from now. It happened within those five months. Uh, Fox Sports was in the corner of Oregon. They're in the corner of Miami of Florida. Does Fox Sports get to tell the Big Ten presidents, Miami of Florida, they're in? It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. But on the other hand, but on the other hand, it's nice to have Fox Sports in your corner than not. Miami, Miami, the big market of Miami, a unique market, a national advertisers would like that you're in the Big Ten, Big Ten advertisers for Fox Sports, CBS, NBC. So we believe that Miami, Florida, they've done the work as well. They've received enough interest where there enough third-party valuations, let's call it that, where they are an interested, interested observer what happens at Florida State. Um, so I want to get to the article. I want to talk more about it, then get to your comments uh, and all that here in a, back, in a bit. Hero, does the ACC have to inform the members besides Florida State the legal plans for dealing with Florida State lawsuit, what would help others plan their own exit? That is a great question. Does the ACC have to inform the other members? I would I would say no, but that's a guess, right? Especially when you have other members who may be planning the same exit, depending on how the Florida State, I, I would say no, but that's just a guess. Hero, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate your continued generosity to the show. Thank you so very much. Um, I want to hurry up and get through this article. It's just a short little article. Then we'll get to your comments. And then we'll get to your phone calls later here quickly in the show. This is the Sun Sentinel. Now, this is from Adam Lichtenstein. And this is right after or soon after. The interview or the question uh, that Radovich, the athletic director, got 
pre-game, pre-bowl game, the pinstripe bowl. Miami Hurricanes are interested observers in Florida State's ACC's future. While rival Florida State takes steps towards leaving the ACC, Miami is currently an interested observer, athletic director Dan Radovich said. First of all, the University of Miami were a proud member of the Atlantic Coast Conference. That's basically what you have to say. According to the ACC bylaws, you cannot be going out and ripping on the ACC. Now, um, Florida State has, but, but Miami doesn't want to go there quite yet. First of all, the University of Miami were a proud member of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Have been for many, many years, Radakovich said at a press conference before Miami's appearance in the Pinstripe Bowl. As all things continue to come up into the marketplace, and what Florida State is looking to do, we're going to be very, very interested observers. But I think the conference is strong. I think we have a good operation there. We would like to have more resources, sure. I think everybody would. We're going to try to move forward and get those things, those through the conference. I'm going to tell you what I believe Radakovich uh, is doing here with this comment. But first, we're going to go through this short article. But I got a feeling, I got a feeling we know um, Radakovich's motivation here. But at this point in time, Miami's athletic director, Radakovich, but at this point in time, we're interested observers and proud members of the ACC. Florida State Board of Trustees voted Friday to sue the ACC to severe the conference's media grant of rights agreement, which ties the school to the conference for the next 12 years. The lawsuit says leaving the ACC could cost the school $572 million. The ACC countered FSU. If FSU does leave the ACC, the conference will be severely weakened as the Seminoles are one of the conference's premier athletic programs and biggest brands. And then it goes on to talk about uh, what um, Jim Ryan and Jim Phillips said about the eight, about all members, including Florida State, willing, willingly and knowingly resign the current grant of rights. We've been through all that. Then the article goes off and said, talks about the new football facility, the groundbreaking Hurricanes announced plans for new football operations center in January. The school is working towards starting construction. Uh, so you can read, I, again, I put a link in the description. You can read the whole article. I did not go through the whole article. I just wanted to point that out. Um, I believe what's going on, and um, again, the lay of the land. We've talked about the lay of the land. North Carolina, the lay of the land. The internal battle. The battle is being waged on what North Carolina is going to be for the future. And right now, it's advantage SEC. The battle that's going on at the University of Miami is a little different. They're a private institution. They become AAU. I believe, we have reasons to believe Miami feels pretty good about their potential but their opportunity to become a member of the Big Ten Conference. Pretty good. So they're going to wait and see. What it is not, it's not that they're not aligned. But we talked about it before and we continue uh, as we poke and prod and ask the questions. The feedback we continue to receive is this president of the University of Miami is not, he's going to be pro Big Ten, but they are not, they are no way going to step out of their comfort zone and go to the courts and challenge this until they see what Florida State does. 
how it works out for Florida State. They're, they were not right in back of Florida State as, as we have reported over the last months. That's not how that's not how the leader of the university is built. He is very con- Miami voted for the additions of SMU, Cal, uh, California, Stanford. Um, they're straddling that fence. They are straddling that fence. Um, but it doesn't surprise me how Radovich answered how he answered this question. But at this point in time, we're interested observers and proud members of the ACC. That's a straddle, right? Making sure making sure they keep their relationships pretty good within the ACC, but they're letting they're letting their boosters know. They're letting people know People who are supporting this internally, they're letting them know we are interested observers. You see, they did not take a shot at Florida State. This was not the same comment that was put out there by Wake Forest, athletic director. They're not taking a shot at Florida State. We're interested observer. Changes in the marketplace. So... I think we know where Miami is. We we I think all of this the last few days have only confirmed to us why we had to move Miami of Florida into the first row of the Holy Smokes Theater. They're not in the position of Florida State. Florida State is has more interest from the SEC and the Big Ten. And I know Miami of Florida Hurricane fans are now upset with me. I can't get through a show without everybody getting upset with me, but I'm just giving you the straight shot, the straight shoot on all this. Miami of Florida, there's enough there. They know that they have the value that can get them into a landing spot, but they are never going to be the tip of the spear. Now, before we get to your comments and questions and your phone calls, um, Clemson, All eyes on Clemson. We're still not backing off the fact that Clemson is still standing on the stage next to Florida State. How Graham Neff answers the questions, what he wants to say tomorrow morning, all eyes on Graham Neff. It's probably going to be similar to what Radakovich just said for the universe for Miami, but I think I got I got a feeling that it's going to be maybe expanded a little bit more. We know here at Peek Around the Corner, we talked about it a couple of months ago. We believe. That Florida State was going to declare something. We talked about it on December 26, 2022, that they were going to have this declaration in the first quarter of 2024. It did not work out that way. It happened nine days before we thought it was going to happen, 360 some days ago. We asked, but but a couple months ago, we said that Clemson was going to follow Florida State and they were going to declare something between January 20th and February 6th. We actually have a date range. Now, there are reasons why, okay, I'm not gonna get into the reasons why that date range is set. Just just can't do it. Because that means we're gonna, uh, just can't do it. But we said this a couple months ago. And then Florida State acted December, what was it, 22nd or 23rd? I don't, whatever the official date was, 22nd. So I, I am very interested if Graham Neff, 
I don't think he's going to use the word observer. Like, we are interested observer. I don't think he's going to use a passive um, phrase in classifying where Clemson is at this point. I don't think he can get away with it. Again, we at Peek Around the Corner said, yeah, Miami, Florida, probably it looks like would be a better blend with Florida State if for the Big Ten if North Carolina and Notre Dame is not available. But again, Clemson has, they have the perception that there is interest out there if they can get out of the ACC. No doors have been closed on, the, on Clemson. That's what we truly believe. The Big Ten door is not closed on Miami, and no doors have been closed on Florida State. I think there's enough interest, and even with this tight media market, with SEC trying to play defense, Big Ten trying to play offense, those two things playing against each other is the perfect conditions for Florida State, for Miami of Florida, for Clemson, and of course, for North Carolina. So I anticipate, and whenever Graham Neff makes a statement, I'm going to be at least here at Peek Around the Corner. When it happens tomorrow morning, he's got to say something. Somebody's going to ask him. I'm going to be either doing an episode, I'm going to be popping on live, because this is what we, we are, and people behind the curtain, this is what we're waiting for. The Clemson statement. Because none of us believe, perceived that Miami was right behind Florida State going to the courts. Mm -mm. But Clemson, there's perception. There's there's people who are saying it's going to happen. So all eyes on Clemson. Let me know what you think Graham Neff is going to say tomorrow morning. Okay, I'm going to get to your comments. I'm going to get to your phone calls. Going to talk about the uh, bowl games. Rutgers with the big win. What about Miller Moss, USC's quarterback? Holy smokes. <sighs> mm. Is he going to be the starting quarterback next year for the Trojans? That was a pretty good performance. Is Miller Moss going to be the starter? It's not going to be like a big time transfer. It's going to be Miller Moss. Ole Miss, Penn State, what's going to happen there? Uh, look, let's take a quick look at, uh, I just want to pop this up. Um, Dan Wolken, interesting nugget from the Rose Bowl media session this morning. Alabama hasn't let players watch film on their own iPads, as they usually do as a protective measure due to the Michigan sign-stealing scandal. Only watching in groups. Holy smokes. They're, they're not even watching on their own iPads because of Michigan. A lot of drama behind the scenes. And of course, as you know, Nick Saban, he hired a, a former 2021. Former linebackers coach, Michigan. Just before a few weeks after the regular season, but before this semifinal game, Saban hires a former linebacker coach under Jim Harbaugh. I wonder why that is. I wonder why that is. It's got it has it has to do with the signs, right? Anyways, um, okay, I've done enough talking, and again, I apologize for the lateness of this show today. I don't know what happened. I have no idea what happened. Jen, Mr. Seminole, hey, hey, another great ball game for the Canes. <laughs> oh, I love college football. I love college football. I, I, I'm, I'm shallow that way, okay? Uh, I'm hearing more and more UNC to SEC are sticking with ACC. If Miami Clemson had a landing spot, we would hear more. Very interesting um, you know, if, if Florida State is, a, is able to crack this open, um, 
if they get a price point, be it zero dollars or 200 million or, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, this is a bad example, but I can't think of another one. It's kind of like, what is good art? If you ask me, Jen, or anybody, Greg, what is good art to you? I would say, I have no idea. I don't know until I see it, right? If I see a picture and I like it, that's good art. I don't know what that price point, I don't know what a good price point, what that number is for Florida State and other schools to jump in and get out of the ACC. I don't know what that number is. I really don't. Jen probably has a good idea, other people in the chat, but I really don't. I can't, I can't grasp it. Hopefully, if it happens, if there's a settlement and it gets announced, then maybe my brain will say, yeah, maybe that's a number that other schools will step through and, 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 and take the deal. Because remember, um, you know, let's say, I think Florida State is out no matter what, no matter what number. But let's say, let's say it's 250 million. Okay, I know Florida State fans are saying, nah, it's not going to be that much. And other people are going to say, Greg, you're crazy. It's going to be more than that. Let's just say $250 million. Don't yell at me. You can yell at me when you call me. Don't yell at me right now. Let's just say it's $250 million. Um, now, let Florida State, I mean, this. give me a second. This is going to sound stupid, okay? This is going to sound really dumb when I say this. But when when, when when the settlement, ACC, back and forth, da 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 they go to 250. Well, Florida State doesn't have to go, oh, 250? Okay, that's the number. They don't have to go, they don't have to write a 250. In the ACC bylaws, you have to pay it out in 30 days. But they don't have to, they can check, they can quickly check. Right, they're having third-party communications, but they can have a more an official engagement with the Big Ten at that time and the SEC, making sure. Okay, two fifty. Okay, we'll write the check now. If it's two hundred fifty million dollars, Miami, Florida. Let's just we're talking about Miami. Let's just take them. Miami, Florida, two hundred fifty million dollars. Okay. How much? Okay, can we, we can we round that up? Can we can we get two hundred fifty million dollars? Ruiz, the big booster, every, other other people. Can we take some money out of endowment, whatever, or a private university? The state's not really going to help us. Two fifty million. Oh, let's check with the Big Ten. What kind of deal we're going to get the Big Ten? It's going to be coming in at a discount for six years. We're only going to be making about ten million dollars more with the Big Ten the next six years, and versus we're going to stay in the ACC. But then again, the next six years are going to be over, right? 2030 is coming. We'd rather be in the Big Ten when it comes to the next media rights deal in 2030. That's what Florida State's thinking. Okay. Okay, 250, 250 that's worth it. Let's sign a check. As long as the Big Ten presidents are willing to vote us in. So even though you get the number... It doesn't mean, you know, these universities are going to say they're going to evaluate. And a lot of their evaluation is, a lot of their evaluation is, is going to be SEC Big Ten's interest. What is their interest? What can they give us? Would the presidents vote us in? Florida State, they know they they will be voted in. So they're, they have a stronger foundation that's why they're one of the reasons why they're being so aggressive miami florida not quite clemson not quite north carolina yes they would have a landing spot but again we talked about where they are situated internally um so they really can't be as aggressive as florida state uh, thank you jen um I appreciate it. In Miami, Clemson, at Atlanta spot, we would hear more. I think we're going to hear more from Clemson real soon. We shall see. We shall see. If not, we'll see what Graham Neff says tomorrow. But I'm willing to take the big Al, Jen, tomorrow 
if if he doesn't say anything, I think he's going to say something a little bit more aggressive than Miami's athletic director. But I do think Miami's athletic director said, answered the question in a way that many, many other athletic directors in the ACC would not have answered it that way. You know, you know what I'm saying? Miami was a little bit more okay with what Florida State is doing than if the Syracuse, Boston College, Wake Forest, a lot of other athletic directors on how they would have answered the question. I think Miami's perfectly, of course they're okay with what Florida State is doing because they, they're they feeling pretty good about the situation that they are in. Thank you so much, Jen, for your generosity to the channel. I appreciate it so very much. North Carolina State just scored a touchdown. Holy smokes. Marcus Williams, not to be a conspiracy theorist, but do you think the Big Ten and SEC could be working together secretly to divide up the map and go off and create their own separate league together? Just a thought. My answer, and I might be in the minority, Marcus, but my answer is no. I don't think the Big Ten and the SEC are working together at all when it comes to the ACC implosion. Much, much less working together and to separate themselves from the rest of FBS. Greg Sankey has been pretty upfront. He, uh, I I don't believe that's happening. I honestly, it's 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 not happening. Could it happen years down the road? Many many years down the road, of course. But it's not happening now. The Big Ten and the SEC are not. And again, I know a lot of you are going to be saying, Greg, you're wrong, and that's fine. But they're not working on a plan together when it comes to carving up the ACC. They're definitely not communicating. They're, you cannot do that. You, you're just, that's not how things work. Fox and ESPN are competitors. SEC and the Big Ten are competitors. They're looking for the advantage. They're looking for a bigger slice of the marketplace. They're not working together. North Carolina is the top target for both the Big Ten and the SEC. SEC is doing a lot of cloak and dagger with North Carolina. That's going to come out. We've reported on it about as, as aggressively as anybody could But there'll be stuff coming out on that. Um, yeah, so no. Um, I don't I don't see it happening. I do not see the Big Ten and the SEC leaving the rest of the FBS behind for now. If it happens ever, it's gonna happen many years from now. There's too much legality, there's just too much. Uh, <laughs> There's too much. These universities are going to be so tired of getting sued after the next couple of years. Um, but I don't think it's happening. But thank you, Marcus, for the super chat. I know I'm in the minority on that. But thank you so much for the super chat. I do appreciate your generosity to the channel. Thank you so very much. Okay. Um... Now I'm going to get to some of your comments here. Yeah, I saw that. North Carolina State just scored 21-19. and Kansas State is driving. Avery Johnson, he's going to be, he's going to cause some problems next year. Avery Johnson, going to cause some problems next year. Uh, Notre Dame versus any Big Ten Brings the ratings. Notre Dame, always the top target. North Carolina, second target. Florida State, third target. The most going to be probably looking like the most available program for Big Ten expansion. 
And that's why I think Florida State is feeling really good about what they're doing. That's why they're being aggressive because there's been enough third party talk, negotiations going on. Not official negotiations. Okay, I'm going to open up the phone lines. Give me a second. Phone lines are now open. 763 260 1333 763 260 1333. Give us a call and talk about anything called football. We've got, I've got Michigan over Alabama. 30 to 20. Michigan 30, Alabama 20. I've got Washington defeating Texas 38 to 35. Washington 38, Texas 35, Michigan 30, Alabama 20. It's going to be Michigan and Washington in the championship game. January 1st, we're going to be coming alive at 4.30 Eastern Time, 3.30 Central Time. We're going to be doing back-to-back -back watch parties on both semifinal games, starting with Michigan, Alabama, then Texas and Washington. So please join us January 1st, the semifinal games. It's going to be lots of fun. And I am going to be Greg the Heater. January 1st is the start of a new year. No more Greg the Cooler. Uh-uh. Those days are over. My 26% winning percentage against the spread, or whatever the number is, it's over. Greg the Heater starting January 1st. Michigan by 10. Washington by 3. Call from Jen. Jen, Mrs. Seminole is on the line. The floor is yours. Thanks for calling, Jen. Hey, hey, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I apologize for the start of the show. Things were... I don't know what was going on, Jen. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh. That's a problem. Well, I'm technology challenged, so I have no judgment here. Um, my idea is just to unplug everything and plug it back in and turn it back on. That's just, exactly like, what I, I did. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> the only thing that works. My IT department hates me. It's cool. No yeah. big deal. Um, yeah, so I'm... Okay. So like I said in my comment, like I'm totally hearing that if North Carolina does anything, it would be the SEC. Mm -hmm. Their new chancellor, or is it their president? Whichever one is a huge SEC guy, right? Or yeah, I think they're, they're going to stick with the ACC, which is wild to me. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, if Florida I, I State couldn't leaves, see it, but. Yeah, if Florida State leaves, there's going to be at least another school leaving. And now suddenly, yep. even before North Carolina, even though they're the top target, if Florida State is able to get out, if they're able to get a number that you all say, okay, that's fine, we're still leaving. If you get out, there's going to be at least one other school following, and suddenly the value of the ACC is going to take another hit in North Carolina. There's enough. There is enough. Um, there's enough. Yeah, if you if you listen to the interim um, chancellor, the day that he was announced interim, he was asked a few questions about conference affiliation, and he basically said, "Yeah, we got to do what's best for North Carolina." So, no, they're right. they're going to follow Florida State. You guys are clearing the path. They're going to follow. I, I don't yeah. believe they're going to stay ACC. Yeah, I I, tech, I agree with that, and I think um, I honestly, and I do believe that some of the relationship between North Carolina and NC State was broken a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can tell me um, more on that, but I do think it was a bit. But I, well, we're we're waiting to see if that proposal passes. That was in that's October. what I'm saying. Like, let's. Let's see how that goes, but and it I, I do. So, yeah. 
I, I kind of feel like if North Carolina follows the path they should follow, which would be go to the Big Ten along with Florida State, then this will all be done. I'm sorry, what was that? I said I feel like if North Carolina follows the path that I think they should follow, which is go with Florida State to the Big Ten, then this is all done. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. Then... Yes, then a lot of big things happen. Um, oh, that's a huge yeah. thing, but other things would happen. No question. Yeah, about I know other. Yeah, I think other things would, but then you wonder is would note okay and answer me this would Notre Dame entertain kind of a partial entry like the ACC, you know, bent over backwards, you know, bent over the chair and let them take. Um, with them, because I don't see that happening. Uh, are you uh, are you asking if the Big Ten would take a scheduling deal with Notre Dame? Yeah, I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. No. Yeah. Um, no. All right. Now I got yeah, a question so, for you, Jen. Sure. Is have you heard anything on if there's been a date set for the court case in Leon County? Has there been so a here's what I think. I think if Florida State is offered a settlement that is the exit fee of what, 120? Yeah. 120 million. I think they take it and I don't think they go to court. Okay. Um... That's what I'm hearing. I think, I think, um, honestly, I, I don't. I don't think this makes it to court. Now, what, what when, now, what, I'm, I'm, um, so when people say it doesn't make it to court, I'm, I understand that. I don't think it goes to court yeah. either, but I'm talking about the initial court case where maybe I'm um, wrong. Like for jurisdiction? Yeah, for jurisdiction, like, you know. I, for, okay. <sighs> So I, I actually had a lawyer on my show on Tuesday, along with your guy, Nathan, who was fantastic. Yeah. Um, so the problem with the ACC's filing is that they claim it was a reactionary filing, right? So it was a countersuit, but you can't countersue when you filed first for an action that hadn't happened. Yeah. Yeah. So... I do believe Florida State is going to win jurisdiction in this case because Florida oh. State is basically an arm of the state of Florida, right? Okay. Yep. Um, the ACC is trying to file in North Carolina because that's obviously where they're located, and we all know where their allegiances lie. Thank you. That's yep. why we're getting the hell out. Yeah. Um. So for me, and and. Uh, from what Danielle said, she's was an ama she's an amazing attorney. Again, it just kind of goes back to the they're calling it a countersuit. It's not a countersuit. They filed on Thursday night. Florida State even hadn't even made their announcement until Friday. Um, a countersuit on an action that hasn't happened yet. You can't sue someone for something they haven't done yet. And legally, Florida State had to do it the way they had to do it. Yes, they, they had did. to make a public notice. Yes, they did. So you yeah. can't punish for someone going the legal route. Uh, that 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 sounds logical to me. Uh, now, could could the ACC just like now? I'm not Jen. I, I'm not a lawyer. And me either. You <laughs> ask anybody in the PATC community. I'm not very bright. So some of these questions. <laughs> I don't believe gonna, that's true. That some of these questions are going to be kind of like, great, come on now. But could North Car uh, North Carolina, I keep wanting to say North Carolina, could the ACC... Well, you're basically saying the thing. <laughs> Go ahead. We get it. Maybe, maybe that's why. Could the ACC pull that filing and then just refile it as a countersuit to what Florida State did? Um, that's where it would get even better for Florida State. Oh, okay. Okay. Because Florida State mm. is filing it based on the Sunshine Laws. Oh. Mm. Okay. So, I, like, I think, 
I think the ACC is in, is in a bad predicament here. Okay. And I think it all comes down to that grain of rights. Yeah. It comes down to that grain of rights because um, when, you, when you look at how Florida State worded, and again, none of us can actually see the actual grain of rights because it's yeah. locked underneath, you know, lock and key. You have to have an armed escort to go look at it, you know, all those things, which is really crazy. Um, kind of tells you that some of the wording in there is a little wonky, but um, it comes down to the fact that ESPN could pull the plug without any, any monetary um, payments to any of these teams in 2027. Yeah. So what Florida State is saying is, hey, if we get to pay the exit fee, the grant of rights shouldn't matter if we get out in 2025. You know, maybe they, maybe they go in, you know, and say, you know, we can pay it through 2027 or lose home games, whichever one they want to do to follow because the, really the grant of rights is for the Florida State home games, right? Yes. Um, yep. So they could give those up. I could see that as a settlement. Um, but so for me, I think that's the out there. And I honestly don't see the ACC wanting to air that to other schools. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think, yeah. Um, so, could it be that we haven't seen, you know, it was reported that, you know, Judge Cooper is the judge for the plaintiff. Yeah. Defend, but is it, yeah. be, we haven't seen it in North Carolina, in Mecklenburg County, because of what you're I don't think you're going to. You're not yeah, I don't it. think you're going to. Okay. I uh, just don't think you're going to. I he, think it's. Go ahead. You know, again, I think what the what um, the attorney was telling me, and again, I mean, she's not like an expert on North Carolina law, but if you had to fight over jurisdiction, it would kind of go, you would have to then, again, I hate to use this word because it keeps getting used all the time. It, it would kind of go into that discovery mode. It would be people would get information, um, and it is. Discovery is a fishing expedition, guys. I don't know what else to tell you. It yeah. really is. They ask for everything. Um, and I, and again, their lawsuit to, to me, which again, uh, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but the ACC bylaws are not to go against another ACC school or file anything for reasons. Oh, how did they word it in the yeah, bylaws? I can't remember how they... On the screen. I'm not sure if I have that part yeah, of the bylaw. Yeah, look at it. It says something about going against the conference or anything like that. And so for me, if they filed this first over an action that didn't happen, they kind of broke their own rules. Yeah. Yeah, I got... But again... I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, again, it's just... it's kind of It's kind of a weird lawsuit that they filed on a Thursday night before an action happened, I would have expected to see that lawsuit get filed as the meeting was started, not the night before. Yes, um, I agree, I agree. So we know then, as of right now, that there hasn't been a date set, correct? For, correct. For Leon County, okay. Yep. So, so is, there's no date set, but there is a judge set, which means yeah. his calendar will be up to date. Typically, you know, it's the holidays. Um, that will be set mm, right after the new year. Okay. Uh, the fact that a judge has been selected kind of tells you a lot. It's going to be um, the story. fact that the fact that one hasn't been selected in New York tells me a lot. In Charlotte. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or not New York. I'm sorry, North Carolina. Yes, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Um, so I just, I think that the, I think the ACC would have been better served to have filed that lawsuit as the meeting was going on. Okay. Now, um, let, let me uh, ask you what your, uh, what are you anticipating? The athletic director um, of Clemson. How do you, he's going to be asked something tomorrow morning. What am I, I think he's going to say no comment. Ooh, 
He doesn't seem like a no comment type of guy. Uh, I agree, but okay. I I guess we'll see. I mean, because I mean, I even okay. Look at what Davo said after Florida State was snubbed. It was very quiet. They were very quiet to me. Um. So, uh, but I could be wrong. Maybe he'll come out and say something. I really could be wrong. Yeah. I just feel like he would hear an inkling of what they would say. And it, to me, the silence has been deafening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I'm i a little bit, hey, Miami fans, I'm going to give you guys a, a little uh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> the fact that your, um, your guy actually said anything that they were observing. Yeah. I kind of tells it. Yeah. Look, it kind of tells me they have more of a window than another team does. But again, let's see what Clemson says tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in some ways. I do think they have a little bit more of a window than Clemson, but I don't believe no doors have been closed on Clemson. I think Clemson, I think they're going to say at least as much as Radakovich said, and I think they're going yeah. to be a little bit more because I, uh, because of things we've been told. So yeah, we'll and I I think Clemson needs to say more. Yeah. Yes, I think they. That's need what to, I mean. Yes. I mean, it was after. Yeah, I think after Florida State was snubbed, you would have liked to have seen those two teams especially say something, yeah. and the fact they didn't, I Maybe. again, I just. I really feel like if it was, again, I know I get killed for this opinion. Yeah. I just, I kind of think it's going to be Georgia Tech, guys. I do. Mm. I know I get killed for this. I'm going to get killed by other people for this. I know it, but (laughs) I know it. But like with, I think, I, I, you know, I think, uh, God, I mean, this is just, I mean, Georgia Tech would be perfect. I mean, the TV market's good. Their academics are good. Um, you have you have a stadium. You have, I mean, you tell me, you tell me. I get it that Miami, everybody, but Miami, yeah, I don't know. Well, I, I can only, I can only, and I can, I can only answer, everything you said about Georgia Tech's correct. And, and yeah. you may, you know, you may end up, being on something there, Jen. The only thing I can say is uh, nobody that we have talked to has mentioned Georgia Tech at all. And when I say I what about Georgia Tech, they dismiss it uh, very quickly. I know. And, and the reason I, I think it is is because uh, obviously they, obviously the SEC would have no interest. In the yes. Big Ten, they just don't. They don't have. They're not going to go for a market that is completely dominated by the SEC. And they would, uh, they, they would consider Georgia Tech being completely, you know, they, they're definitely a tiers, multiple tiers down from Georgia Bulldogs. And Miami is right. its own market. Tallahassee is its own market. Um, you know, you have your own worlds. Georgia Tech doesn't yeah. have its own world. So the Big Ten isn't. Los Angeles was big enough for USC, UCLA, uh, Fox Sports did not want ESPN to have any part of Los Angeles once Fox Sports right. was able to get USC. But the Georgia Tech thing is just, it's, uh, it doesn't fit the Big Ten's model. I, I, but, here's, I mean, I agree with you, but I think it could fall to them should that come the case. Okay, well, that's a good, you know, and people agree with you, Jen. Some people do agree with you. Yeah, I can rake over the it, coals by everybody. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I get it. And I think, I mean, some people think it's my, my Miami hatred glasses. But I think, you know, with Florida State being the one for sure, right, um, we all don't think Notre Dame's going, right? Notre Dame's never going to make that choice. Well, I don't think they yet. would, and I – yeah. yeah, not yet. And I and it, by the way, I don't think it would be all that beneficial to them because nobody's forcing them to. Now, should Notre Dame next year or something like that go undefeated and get left out, which I don't think they would, but should that happen, then we would have a conversation and then you could talk about 
some sort of way to get them in a conference, right? Mm -hmm. But Notre Dame's never been forced to, and they're not ever going to be forced to. Not, I mean, I don't think they will. We'll see. Um, but I mean, obviously then it would be North Carolina. And again, I'm just not hearing, I don't know why North Carolina wouldn't have the interest in jumping to the big 10. Um, they didn't a few years ago. I don't think they do now, especially with the people running, um, the school. So, um, if, if North Carolina goes to the SEC, um, I was hearing they would, probably take UNC and then Virginia and Virginia Tech with them. Now, I don't know how true that is, um, but Virginia is way more tied up than North Carolina is with um, NC State. That's for sure. Yes, I I would agree. Um, And uh, now if that proposal passes in the North Carolina Board of Governors, if in the, in, the, in the proposal was, to be more specific, was if North Carolina wanted to change the conference affiliation, they would have to bring in front of the board and the university system president, they would have to bring a plan that you know showed how they would exit, the financial plan and everything else. And then the University of North Carolina uh, system president would get the way in on it. We don't know exactly what that means. That's how it's stated in the proposal, but it sounds like the system president would have a lot of power in okaying that change of a conference affiliation. The problem with that is, is that the system chancellor, which is Peter Hans, he, he overlooks 16 public universities in the state of North Carolina, one of them being North Carolina Chapel Hill, the other one being North Carolina State. He has to answer to the interest of North Carolina State. So if that proposal Mm -hmm. passes, which North Carolina State people want it to pass, then then North Carolina has more hurdles to overcome. And it's gonna be much like what Virginia and Virginia Tech is. You, uh, I mean, you know more, way more about this than I do, but can you answer if it hurt Miami and NC State for their votes for um, Southern Miss, Cal, and Stanford? Because I'm hearing it did. Did, did it hurt them in which way? Um, well, for NC State to be attached to North Carolina and for Miami to, you know, maybe be given the um, green light with Florida State. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Um... I'm, I'm going to have to answer no. Look, during that whole voting thing, yeah. uh, we were, we reported this pretty much every single day. The PATC community got really sick and tired of me. But we were <sighs> reporting because we were told over and over and over again that that vote didn't, it had importance, but it wasn't that important. Like, it, okay. did, it did not... It wasn't, it wasn't going to clutter up the exit ramp for North Carolina, for Florida State, for Clemson. It wasn't going to remove okay. anything out of your exit ramps. It had nothing to do with the future potential exit of Florida State. That vote had not, because the dissolution theory that everyone's been talking about for months, we, we've always said that isn't going to happen. It's not in play. Yeah. So... The voting and whether the vote those three schools in or not, Florida State is not leaving the ACC by dissolution of a certain number of votes. That's not how right. they were ever going to leave. So it didn't really matter. To it mattered, but it didn't really matter. Basically, it helped Florida State. In the I, I agree with you. That's exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. I think it helped them it helps because them. yes, yeah, you, in, they were able to add that as part of their suit, yes. which I think works for them, to be honest. Absolutely. And um, the other thing was, oh, crap, where did I just lose my train of thought? Um, I do think Florida State um, really was hand-in-hand hand with Clemson a lot more than Miami. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
And now I don't know how hand in hand they are. And so can you like, I'm wondering why has Clemson fallen off a little bit more? I, I don't think Clem, I, I think Clemson and, and also this has been in public reports. I think Clemson yeah. has been a lot closer to Florida State and North Carolina. Right. Than okay. Miami of Florida Miami. And part of that is because Miami is a private school. Honestly, right. there is so much to that. Um I agree. It, it's, yeah. it's it's why and I it's why when we reported in March thirty first, two thousand twenty two that USC called the Big Ten, we said it over and over and over and over and over again. USC called the Big Ten alone. Texas and Oklahoma called the SEC together. But USC right. called uh, USC called Big Ten alone. A lot of that has to do with because they're the private university. So it's hard. Okay. It's a, kind of an apples and oranges stuff going on with Miami of Florida and those other schools. So that that is kind of muddying up the waters and trying to figure out what's going on. There is more of a connection with Clemson, North Carolina, Clemson, Florida yeah. State than any of those schools have with Miami, Florida. Right. And so let me ask you, what do you think about Clemson? Because I am really fascinated by where they end up, I guess, or we just wait to see what they say tomorrow. Like, I guess, I guess if they say something tomorrow, then they have an idea that they have a landing spot, right? We now we have been told for months, we've, we've done a lot of, done quite a bit of live shows on it that Clemson mm -hmm. feels pretty good. Nothing's for certain. They're feeling pretty good. Not like Florida State, not like North Carolina, but they're feeling pretty good. They have spent nine months on this. They, they as you know, mm -hmm. they hired an outside firm. Right. I think yep. they've gotten enough feedback, third-party feedback, to say, yes, this is going to be beneficial to us 20 years from now and beyond if we do something. And we were told that they were going to make a declaration after Florida State, sometime in the third week of January, first week of February, of course, Florida State moved up their time schedule. So yeah. is Clemson going to move up their time schedule, or are they going to just wait it out? I think, now again, I I think they're going to do something because... I think they have to, don't you? I think they have to. Yeah, I think they have to because it, it gives it gives them more value, and I think I think it's been their plan to do so for so long that they put so much work into it. You know, when you put so much work into something, I mm -hmm. I really think they're going to do something. That's why I'm anticipating Graham Neff not to give everything away tomorrow, but to say something a little bit more aggressive than Miami athletic director. Oh, so you don't think they're going to say anything as aggressive as what he said? No, I, I think they're going to say a little bit more than oh, what Miami okay. said. Oh, okay. Okay. But they're not going to. They're not going to. They're not going to. You know, they're not going to choose tomorrow as their big, you know, declaration. But I think they're going to be a little bit more aggressive in this statement than what Miami just said today, which was more aggressive than I think a lot of other schools in the ACC would have said, right? Yeah, but I, think I mean, I agree. I think for me, it was surprising to even hear uh, Miami say that. Yeah. I mean, to me, that was surprising. So that was really telling. So again, yeah, let's see what Clemson has to say. Yeah. Um, but I still think that if Clemson is the option or can make themselves available, that they would be the dancing partner with Florida State. They, but they, again, I'm still hearing that Florida State doesn't need a dancing partner for right now. But again, I, we'll see. We'll I, see. I agree with you. All right. Thank you, uh, Jen. All right. Thank you. Beautiful. You Mrs. guys have Seminole. a great night. Yeah, you too. Please call again. We're probably going to pop I live sure. after whatever Graham Neff says. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Oh, Thank yeah. You. Let's let's see it. I can't wait to hear. Yeah. All right. Appreciate have a good it. one. Thanks, great call, Bye. Jen. Once again, Mrs. Seminole. Boom. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. Call from Caleb. I'm sorry, did not get the name. 
Caleb. Caleb, nice for you yes, to call. Sir. The floor is yours. Thank you. I'm sorry if I, when I get, get excited, I talk way fast. Um, no problem. No problem. With your previous caller, I was with Georgia Tech. I was, the only way I think they would get in is Notre Dame. That's just my opinion. Yeah, okay. And okay. when, with Big Ten expansion, I think what would help, um, would help pay for Florida State and, uh, and other schools is if they went to a 10 game. 10 game schedule. Yes. If, then, yep. Yep. If, if the immediate partners are willing to pay more money. Yes. Yeah. Which I think they would be. Yeah. Um, and go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and I think eventually someone like Amazon would come in eventually, maybe down the road, like for like a Friday night game or a 1030 game, maybe? Yes. Uh, Amazon wants to get into the college football space. No question about it. They offered the Big Ten more money than CBS and NBC did, but the Big Ten still kind of didn't want to do the deal. Um, Amazon yeah. was in the Pac-12 talks. I think you're right. I think Amazon's going to get into the college football space at some point in time. Friday night is a pretty good night for Amazon. And another idea I thought about with them is like maybe they could have a follow a team around or something because like you know how the Big Ten has like um, Big Ten Tonight or something where they follow certain schools around. Yes. I think they could do that, yep. and they could do it more openly because it's they're not. Um, I don't know what the right word is. No, I understand. Head, yep. But head down because they can do more stuff than. I think. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Um, and look, um, you might be onto something. Look, if if the if the opportunity if the opportunity happens for the Big Ten, let's just take for the Big Ten, uh, yeah. because it's easier for them to add yet another media partner, right? But if yeah. the Big Ten has the opportunity, if Florida State gets a price point. If Florida State looks at the Big Ten, the Big Ten does not want to miss their opportunity to finally get into the Southeast, new demographics, yeah. student athletes, all that stuff. And their media partners don't quite cough up enough money. Um, so they might look to Amazon for that Friday night game. And then Amazon's money might grease the skids beautifully for Florida State to come on in and a 20th team to come on in. So you might be onto something. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it could, and it, it might not be for a few years where that would happen. They can like say this is for the future. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Because I don't, thank you. Thank you, you very it. much. Have a good night. I appreciate it. Great call. Thanks. Call again. Yep. Thank you so very much. <laughs> That was a great call. Thank you, Caleb. Call again. What do we got here? Fourth and one. I'm way behind you guys. I'm way behind you. I'm on. A, a, um, I'm. A, I'm way behind you on the action for a couple different reasons. One is I, the monitor that I'm watching. This is like 30 seconds behind you. Plus the YouTube. Uh, they went for it and they got it. Kansas State's got it. That might have shut the door down in North Carolina State. Call from JD. JD, the floor is yours, Mr. Seminole. What is going on? What do you think about Miami's athletic director? What did he say? What he said? He didn't say a whole lot, but I think he might have said something. What's your take, JD? Um. Real quick before I get on that, I do want to follow through with what you and Jen were talking about. From what I understand, the ACC has what twenty days or three weeks to respond to the uh, to the lawsuit. So 
no no formal hearing date would be set until they respond from what i understand okay so, wait 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 back up back up now jd i apologize i'm as you know i'm a little slow here okay Okay. Northern Minnesota doesn't things don't quite go as fast as th the rest of the world. Use ACC has twenty days, thirty days. I, I thought, yeah, I thought I saw. I thought it was twenty days. It, I know it's it's so many weeks, and I can't remember what it was. To so respond, whether it was twenty days or okay. or three weeks or whatever, they have a certain amount of time to respond to the suit. So that's so. So they have a certain amount of time that they can wait to file their response. So okay. no, no, no dates can be set until you know you're just going through the process, is what you're okay, doing. Okay, but I okay, but I'm I'm glad you're telling me this because I don't even know the process. Okay, well, so, there, so there's, there's well, a lot on. of lawyers out there, and uh, and um, I know Jen was talking about Danielle, Danielle Kelly. She's awesome. Um, oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, hold and, on. Uh, Hold on, I'm calling a timeout. I'm calling a timeout. I'm, I threw the red <laughs> okay. flag. I'm calling a timeout. Okay. So the the, the 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 suit that was filed from Florida State, and I believe it happened December twenty second. Maybe it was the twenty third. Yes, sir. We are talking about the the ACC has 20 or whatever days to respond to that suit right before yeah. before that can be before that court case the date can be set in, in tallahassee is that what you're saying from what i understand and again i haven't okay. i haven't gotten too much into it it's just Okay. on the boards and so on and you've sure. got the lawyers talking back and forth like on war chant and trust me we got a bunch of lawyers in there sure. so, so the, uh, i'm just kind of glancing at their conversations and then i i got in a little bit of a debate with one of the lawyers this past week N nothing contentious we were just you yeah. know just just and and that was one thing that was said was that the acc has weeks you know how many weeks it was to even respond to the suit Okay, what about so, what about um, as Jen and I were talking? What about the date of the lawsuit that the ACC filed? Uh, yeah, ACC filed, and I, I'm guessing it's going to be in Mecklenburg County. But there, as far as I know, there hasn't been a date set on that, and I'm guessing because. Florida State would have twenty days or whatever to respond to that one. Is that how that goes, or I, I, whatever the time frame is? And again, yeah. the the twenty days was just going off of memory. I might have been incorrect on that. I just know it was so many weeks. I just thought I heard twenty days when I was okay. listening to a, a okay. podcast. And uh, and anyway, so but I I don't know North Carolina law, but I'm assuming you know there's a there's a similar amount of of uh, of, of time a, a similar time frame for a response to be given so you know it you, you look and, and it just depends on which lawyer you know which lawyer is giving their opinion you know where where was the actual transaction i mean where was everything signed was it signed in florida or you know because you're you're actually dealing with the state of florida would the state of florida have jurisdiction over the ACC, just a separate entity. Uh, I've seen, I've heard some lawyers talking about it's most likely to get, you know, kicked up to the federal courts. Um, I don't know. And, and no. you know, FSU wants to expedite it. The ACC is going to want to slow walk it. You know, there's one thing I'm, I'm, you see from media, and I've even seen you or I thought I heard you kind of hint around about this and and whether you had inside information or it was just your assumption but there was there's been some assumptions going around in media circles that uh, it, it's going to get expedited now maybe that's just people assuming that the ACC wouldn't want to drag it out because you're going to get into discovery you're going to get into a lot of the issues and you're going to open up books they don't want opened um, at the same time, the ACC has to insure against a jailbreak. 
you know, and yes, and right now they are really teetering right on the line, and it could go either way. For them. well, I, I don't I don't expect it's going to go either good or bad for them. It's going to either go bad or or terrible. You know, like worst case nuclear. You know, and, and the and the conference falls apart. But at the same time, I don't think there's as many landing spots as what we. You know, people like myself assumed six months ago, a year ago, when we, we just thought the the uh, ACC was going to just get divvied up in all different directions. And it doesn't sound like the big two, um, the SEC and the Big Ten, media market, are, are really itching to take a whole lot of people. Media market is so tight right now. If you if you if you listen to sports media podcasts with John or Ron and Andrew Mashan. Their predictions for 2024. The media market is tight, tight, tight. They haven't seen it like this in forever. So that's one of the the uh, the headwinds that the some of these ACC schools are going to have when joining a different conference. If it, if that happens, uh, I, they're still going to do it, right? They're still going to do it. There's still going to be some that are going to leave if if things happen in the courts that they hope to happen with the settlement. Um, but yeah, the market is tight, tight, tight. So, yes, sir. yeah. Uh, but, yes. but, but, um, what, um, but, now do you have any, maybe you don't have any impressions or opinions on what the Miami athletic director said today. Um, he didn't say a whole lot, but he did say something. Um, and what do you think, uh, Graham Neff, uh, the athletic director of Clemson, you know, he's got to say something tomorrow morning. He's going to be in front of the mic before the bowl games. He's going to get, going to get asked something. What do you think he, how he's going to respond to the question of what Florida state has done, just did filing the lawsuit in Tallahassee against the ACC? I echo a lot of your previous conversation with you and Jen. The fact is, most likely, Clemson's response will dictate where they stand. Not necessarily, but if he comes with an aggressive approach, which, again, you're only going to be so aggressive whenever yeah, you're, yeah. you have a microphone in front of your face. But it's not so much the way you say it, but what you say. Yeah. And so... It, it, it could go several different ways. I, I'm, I think where, where we stand in the middle, the second to third week of January is really where we're going to know. Because by then you'll have either heard something or you'll be hearing rumors. But if it's crickets, then, then to me that gives some validity that Miami has moved ahead of Clemson. That 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 was that's what you would naturally be inclined to believe mm -hmm. now i i'm mixed i prefer you know fsu doesn't have a choice in this fsu is not you know preparing the way for 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 somebody else you know nah, they're exactly. being told yeah. who their partner would be yeah. i mean i'm a diehard no been a diehard no for 30 something years but at the same time it's like you know i, I feel confident in our brand that we'd be one of the top choices to go. But um, I, I, after that, see, Clemson to me as a brand is better. Miami has geography to their advantage mm -hmm. and in location. So with Miami, I, I mean, you think about it like this. Radakovich, you know, earlier in the season, he was having an in-game interview, and he flat out said that a, a new stadium's not in, in, in the uh, – in the in the workings for you know a long time they're looking at a long-term agreement yeah. with hard rock Stadium. Yeah. and then some of the miami insiders um you know one guy john michaels he's a guy he's a sports talk show or yes yeah, sports talk show host up in atlanta i've listened to him for years but uh he's he's a he's a diehard cane um he also does some podcasts, and I don't listen to Miami podcasts, but ironically, I like John Michael. So anyway, but uh, 
he he's talked about and others have talked about and even Bob Thompson last night was talking about it on the uh, Immaculate and their show um, was is that it's real estate. There's no place to put a stadium down there. Mm-hmm. You know, all real estate is either spoken for or the way. And I haven't been down to their campus, but it's 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 right smack dab in kind of a high society area, from what I understand, in Coral Gables. And mm-hmm. you're not going to build a stadium right there, and there's probably not any real estate to put it in there. You know, yeah. as, as Seminole fans, we make fun of Miami on their little teeny tiny indoor practice facility, but in, in honesty, the reason it's so small is there's just not a lot of places to put it. You know, yeah, they're there's, building. There's no, they're, it sounds like they're about to break ground in January for a new indoor practice facility. But well, yeah. no, it's a it's a football it's a football operation, basically oh, okay. a football. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, it is. That's right. That's right. The the, the, you know, the stadium is a long term problem, no question about it. Well, they they won't have a stadium on campus. They're just not going to. Mm-hmm. You know, they would have to. And I think I remember a conversation you had with Steve a while back where. One of his buddies, it's a is, is a Canes fan that talked about they they might there's some property so many miles away, but again, if you get more than five minutes away, it, it's it's a problem. And I mean, here's the truth. Here, here's the other issue: most of the Miami fan base isn't in Coral Gables anyway. So, what I'm reason I'm bringing all this up is it's a it's a much broader issue. Miami's never going to sell out their stadiums unless they're playing Florida State or unless Miami's looking for a national championship. Other than that, they're going to be half-empty stadiums. So the Big Ten, if it is the Big Ten, has to decide, are we really wanting the market or do we want the brand? Because the the Miami brand from years ago, I doubt it ever comes back. You know, maybe I could be wrong, Mm -hmm. but I, I just don't know that it ever comes back. And... There were factors involved to, re, to suggest why Miami, Miami was so sex successful back then and why their stadiums were full then. There's factors that suggest why that will never be a consistent thing mm-hmm. moving forward. And um, I don't know. Like I said, well, I, I think yeah. that – go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I um, – no, I, 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 uh, I agree with everything you, you said. Um um, it's clear what what the pros and cons of Miami is, and that, and that is why they're they're not the first, second, or third target of the Big Ten, and they're probably not the top five or six targets of the SEC. Um, as CFB playoff edit says in the chat in the in the chat, UCLA doesn't either. In other words, UCLA is not going to fill up their Rose Bowl stadium. They are fan. Fan engagement is about where Miami of Florida is. But uh, the Big Ten wanted to make sure they locked down that Los Angeles market. The, the, I think what we're going to find out, and I think we're going to find out this coming year in, in the football season, UCLA's uh, tickets for football and everything, football, uh, their ticket sales are going to go up. Uh, there's going to be some Big Ten fan bases, including myself and the Little General, by the way, are going to be going to uh, UCLA. Minnesota has an away game at UCLA next year. Uh, I'm, I'm, the Big Ten fans are going to help fill up that UCLA stadium. So you're going to see an increase in UCLA tickets. I think the same thing would, would happen in Miami. Um, I think there'd be a little bit more tickets sold and everything else and t-shirt sales and everything going down there in Miami if they they would join the Big Ten. But there is no question that that is something that the Big Ten presidents, the commissioner, it you know, it's a mark against Miami. No question about it. You're absolutely right. Well, it's just that um, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, there's pros and cons to both and you know it, it just depends on what what is the highest priority if it's a if it's a successful brand that's going to get higher viewership well then you take Clemson if it's, it's it, as you suggested a 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's all you know, and it's also and 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 I, it, you know, it's it's one of those things where, uh, I think Fox would love, you know, if if North Carolina and Notre Dame don't get themselves available to the Big Ten, I think Fox would love to entertain the thought. It's not of adding Miami to their portfolio, to that big market, to offer to their national advertisers. Um, Jamie sure. Thornton in the chat, advertisers like Miami because you can reach a new market and population, Cuban-Americans, and everybody else down there, Venezuelans-Americans. and I think, and we've been told this, that's why we moved them in the first row, Miami does have some... They have some things in the corner and some things are not in the corner. Um, so it's going to be interesting how it plays out. I do think, I do think Rat, Radakovich's words, and I'm probably playing too much of a psych, psychiatrist or, or a psychologist or whatever, but I, 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 I think he would have answered that differently if he, because Miami has spent time on this as well, just like Clemson and, of course, Florida State. I think he would have answered that question differently if Miami would have received a whole bunch of negativity when they've been doing some third-party discussions. That's how I'm taking it. So, um, Well, what I'm going to assume is, and I remember one of your, you know, talks, um, one, one of your shows, uh, probably, you know, two or three months ago, uh, where Miami stood, and you've alluded to it recently as far as that the uh, athletic department and the university president aren't necessarily on the same page. Um, they, you know, they both wanted Miami to advance. It's just whether or not they're going to dish out a significant amount of money with uncertainty. And uh, or, or they're actually going to push forward with all the uncertainty. So it sounds like Miami knows their place now. Yeah, I think and they're they just going to sit and wait their turn. They're they, just going to wait their turn. Yeah, they they don't they don't control their own destiny like Florida State, but yes, they sir. are in the game, so to speak, in landing in the Big Ten. So I yeah. think so. I yeah. think so. And then, like I said, you know, Clemson. And I agree with what, what what you and Jim were talking about in the conversation. Um, Clemson, it, Clemson, if they want out, if they don't want to get left out, they have to be really aggressive, and they they have to try to take somebody's spot. I think. And I agree. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I agree, and I think that's why I'm so anxious to find out what Graham Neff says tomorrow morning. Um, before I get off, let me ask you a question here. Um, your response, you know, you're seeing all these articles about FSU and FSU's place and everything. Um, and this is. <laughs> um, go ahead. Go ahead. Is, is, is it really obvious there is a bias against FSU? Just, just please, uh, you know. As FSU fans, we're not paranoid, okay? Are you seeing the bias inside the media? I mean, is it clear to everyone else, too? Um, like the Pat Forty article and some of the other articles. I don't know if I don't it's, mean like everybody's out to get us. I don't mean that. I don't know. Well, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to answer it this way. Twofold. Twofold answer. One is I can understand why you think that, okay? I can understand mm -hmm. why Florida State fan base thinks that. The second thing is, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a little bit, hopefully a short rant here. Hopefully I don't make it a long rant, but, but what I'm really, now, of course, I'm not a Florida State Seminole fan, so, um, so maybe, maybe, maybe I could pick that up if I was, but what I'm really getting just really nauseated over is the college, and I'm not going to say all of them, but your typical college football reporter who is constantly saying, and, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing with them, 
But it's easy for them to get up on their high horse and say, the student athletes should get this, this, and this. They should be getting more like a Jay Billis and everybody at ESPN. They keep going on their soapbox saying they should have the freedom. They should be able to go on the transfer portal. They should not have to go through a waiver process. They should be able to do this, 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 this. Freedom, 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 freedom. Okay, cool. But then on the other hand, they can't acknowledge the fact that all this new freedom for the student athletes, which is great, higher compensation, great, more choices, great, that affects the universities and fact departments. So they have to go and do the best that they can for themselves. It's almost like Pat Forty and everybody else saying, student athletes, student athletes, student athletes. What do you mean Florida State isn't, isn't satisfied with $160 million athletic budget? What are you talking about? Florida State just paid $8 million a year for Mike Norvell. Florida State doesn't have to worry about paying the student athletes. It's almost like, I don't get it. I don't get it. And that's why that Pat Forty Sports, Illust Sports Illustrated article set me off again. You, if you're going to have this change in college sports and college football, which I'm fine with, the courts are ruling in favor of it. That's cool. That's fine. But if you're going to do all that, of course the universities are going to react to that. Of course Brett Yormark is going to react to that. Of course Texas and Oklahoma and USC and now Florida State. So don't act surprised. Don't act, oh, they're being brazen. Oh, they're not, they're lacking common sense. Oh, they're being greedy. It's none of that. They're reacting to the world that you wanted to create. It's as simple as that. So that's why I went off today on my episode. I apologize again for ranting on one of your phone no, calls, JD. No, no, no. You, don't apologize. you get the last word. Actually, you get the if last you give word. me a minute, I have my own little rant, and I'll try to. <laughs> I know I've gone a little long here, so I'll try to condense it Got down. It. Just in the last week, you've had Pat Forty, you've had like the Matt Hayes, and he's uh, yeah, he's just you know, if Saturday down south, you have Mike Bianchi, all these folks that are almost outraged that FSU is trying to leave the ACC. Yeah. They don't want yes. FSU going to the Big Ten. They don't want FSU going to the SEC. You know, it's been like this for years. See, FSU is a very independent school. They were an independent school when they when they tried to get into the SEC for decades. And then again, and I'm not going to rehash the whole how the SEC-ACC thing happened. But anyway, even when they joined the ACC, it's not like they don't play well with others. In the ACC, it was the Triangle, you know, Tobacco Road, and then everybody else. We were the ones financing the conference because we got all the viewership, but we weren't in the cool kids club, and that's okay. We were just a you know a, a good a member in good standing. We didn't rock the boat. We didn't do any of that. The reason all this is in its place now is because of what you said today, and I and I. I watched your uh, I watched your episode earlier today. You said it perfectly. It's not about we think we're so much better or or, or we're uh, entitled to anything else. It is about survival. You know, if we're going to the Big Ten, which I hope we are, are we going to be a member of good standing or are we going to cause issues? No, we don't typically do that. You know, the only reason we've been so vocal is because of the crisis. That is it. And, and, and I'm just, I'm taken aback f from all the uh, Southeastern um, media members. I, I mean, it's, it, it, if you are a Florida Gator or you are uh, in the SEC media or whatever, the, just the thought that FSU competes on a level playing field with you, that they just can't handle it. Most of these media members, you know, that have been have been talking out, they're mostly Gators, and then also you have some that are, you know, associated with with other universities, and it's just like it has irritated the Southeastern Conference that FSU and Clemson have been so successful in their backyard. Yeah. It has eaten at them for decades. And 
again. Anyway, I was just kind of curious if you were you were seeing the same thing. That's all. Got it. All right, Mark, all right I didn't man. need to take so much of your time. And you didn't know Seminoles were going to start taking over your show, did you? That's fine. That's so. beautiful. I love it. <laughs> all right. Have a good night. Got it. Thank, Thank you, you, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Great phone call. Excellent. Mr. JD, Mr. Seminole. Holy smokes. JD doing a great job giving his perspective on what is going down. Cam and B, thank you for the super chat. Nine win Jayhawks. Big 12 next year. Rock Chalk Jayhawks. Cam and B putting his flag down on the ground. Nine wins. It was a beautiful season. Beautiful season by Lance Lee Pold. All from Steve. Steve, can you hold on one second, sir? Sure. I appreciate it. Uh, and they, they've got Devin Neal coming back. They got the quarterback coming back. They don't have their offensive coordinator coming back, but they've got a lot of offensive juice coming back for the Kansas Jayhawks. John Teal, if the ACC goes under in both Stanford and California, along with SMU, click up with Oregon State and Washington State, will that be enough to build and be a power four? No, I do not think so. Um but we're a long ways away from all that happening. Uh, there is still a decent chance the ACC survives in some way, even if it's not under the under the ESPN umbrella, but we're going to have to find out. But no, I, I don't think... Um, I, I don't think so, John, but we're a long... I cannot predict that far in the future. But John Teal, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. John Teal, nobody's buying that you're not smart, Greg. Colombo, I don't know. Have you have you asked my family that question? Have you asked my wife that question? I love Colombo. I watched every episode a million times. I am no Colombo. Thank you, John Teal, for the super chat for your continued generosity. The evil badger, Ryan Willie. Do you think that if the Big Ten and the SEC go to twenty four or more, the season would be lengthened? Boy. I... I don't think the season's going to be lengthened. I mean, beyond expanding the playoffs to 16 teams, that's probably going to happen. I don't think, boy, the only way that would happen if there was a true collective bargain agreement between the student athletes and the players, I think that's the only way you could really lengthen the, um, I don't see that happening. Thank you, Ryan Willie. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate, again, your generosity to the channel. Steven, thank you for your patience. I appreciate it, Mr. Bearcat. The floor is yours. Speaking of the ACC, it hasn't been a great 24 hours on the field here either, Greg. No, no, it hasn't. <laughs> Miami went down. <laughs> North Carolina State went down. Louisville. Boston College went though. Yeah. Pardon? Boston College defeated SMU. Yeah. 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 Well, that's just like playing a conference game next year. Yeah. So, yes, it is. You know? Yeah. But anyhow, um, maybe um, when when I was talking about the stadium at Miami, um, I wasn't as clear as I could be because a lot of times I'm not. <laughs> I don't communicate no, that great you're, sometimes. You're you're a great communicator, Steve. Um, what the deal is, this starts with Ruiz, okay? He's the guy that got this whole thing started. Well, he's had, he's got some problems with the SEC, and I'm not talking the Southeast Conference. I'm talking the other SEC, <laughs> Security Exchange Commissions, uh, and the government with his life wallet. Um, they're trying to prove it was a Ponzi scheme, da 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 da. The, yeah. the, the stock value fell under a dollar. Um, they were going to take him off of NASDAQ, all this good stuff. Anyhow, he was the one that got it started. Well, he had grandiose ideas of going up to Freedom Park, three or four miles just north of the campus, uh, for a piece of land that's got some soccer fields and things of that, but it's it's not near full. Well, he was saying, you know, we're going to build a 60,000 seat stadium there. And the the government of Coral Gable said, whoa, 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 you know, um, we don't think so right now. So that kind of still on hold. 
Um, it's going to be used for a recreational type area, facility. The land's going to be used. Um, but he's definitely got some governmental hurdles that he needs to <laughs> jump over to even get it started there. Yeah. So then they said, right across from the state, I'm sorry, right across from the campus, right on 1A, there's a rail system that goes there. There's a, there's a strip mall that takes up a bunch of land. It's got huge parking that's for sale, can be had. There's also, you'd have to buy a couple of private, I don't want to know if I will, residents might not be the right word, Greg, but some other private land to build a, because the people in Miami have tempered, excuse me, tempered Ruiz, Ruiz down to, hey, 45,000 is enough, okay? We don't need 60,000, 45 is enough, yeah. and we can put a 45,000 seat stadium right there. Right across the street, great access. Um, da 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 da. Well, again, buying private land is not as easy as going into um, a municipality and say, "Hey, you know, let's uh, let's do this." But Ruth keeps saying it's going to be my money. It's not going to be tax dollars money. It's not going to be really any university money. He's worth one point five billion, Greg. Mm-hmm. Um. He keeps saying, he keeps reiterating that. Now, it's funny because over the holidays, I talked to my friend from, from uh, Lauderdale, and he said what really sticks in Ruiz is uh, it, it just he can't handle is FAU, FIU, UCF, UF, FSU, and now USF's going to have their own stadium. And he can't stand that Miami's going to be the only Division One school in the state not to have their own stadium. Mm-hmm. I guess that sticks in his crawl. Unbelievable. Yeah. So we'll see how that all transpires after he gets done with uh, with his uh, problems with uh, with the government. But we'll see how that yeah. goes. Anyhow. Yeah. But that I, I I don't know that I made myself as clear the no, last time. No, you did. You did. I think we can all agree that it's it's a long-term issue. It's not going to be an issue that's going to go away anytime soon. It's an issue that very well could be solved in a decade or so. Um, but it's something that is an albatross around that program. And it has been, and it continued to be. Um, so I think we can agree with that. Yeah, if he had his way, he would start it tomorrow. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. just the type of guy he is, um, which everybody knows that's obviously a pipe dream. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to ask you, Greg, and I know you've mentioned it, but you really haven't mentioned it. Okay. Because I always go back to this, and you know I do, the Notre Dame thing. Yeah. Is there any talk behind closed doors that that NBC Notre Dame deal can be easily folded into the Big Ten? Well, <clears throat> I... Are people... Uh, in my daily conversations, are people act, actively talking about it? No. But I okay. think if I would ask okay. the question to, you know, they would say, yeah, it probably would be able to be folded in. So... But people are not talking about that. Uh, people are not really... Um, look, Notre Dame, if they could have been the first one out of the gate. And if they would have been, it would have made it a whole lot easier for Florida State, for North Carolina. So them not being the first one out of the gate, I don't think they're going to be out of the gate. I don't think we're going to hear from Notre Dame uh, unless there's a big-time implosion in the ACC. Unless it's Florida State and a few others, right? So, yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me bring up this point, then I'll let you go. Um, when when your Mark was speaking about what's going to happen in twenty twenty six, he's being questioned. Um, 
He said there's been discussions that we've wiped the board clean. Okay. I'm sorry. What was that? Brett Yarmark said. About the CFP in 2026. Okay. That we just wipe the board clean. We start all over. Okay. Well, time's getting late to really do that. But what would happen if Big Ten, all the conferences, said, um, Notre Dame, you don't get your vote anymore? Um. Well, I don't think that will happen. Um, I think Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame will continue to get their vote for 2026 and beyond. The problem is, is they they don't have a veto vote for 2026. Nobody does. It's right. Whatever happens to 2026 is going to be determined by real politique. In other words. It's going to be uh, the powers that be, SEC and the Big Ten, are going to, they're going to determine who's going to really be able to vote in the room. And, of course, you know I'm a strong believer that the Big Ten, is de- uh, the Big 12 is definitely going to be in the room. I also think uh, G5 is going to make sure that they do all they can to get, I think they're going to be in the room as well, although, you know, I, I think reasonable people can, have a different opinion on that. <clears throat> uh, I think Notre Dame has a vote. I think they're going to continue to have a vote, but you know, their de- <laughs> their power isn't going to be like it was before. Their power is okay, going to be diminished. Yeah. That's what I. That's what I wanted your opinion about diminished yeah. power yeah. in the new twenty twenty six. And beyond era. Yeah. And everything yeah. else, yeah. I, I believe. Yeah. Okay. But, but you right. remember, well, though, just... ESP, I mean, the SEC, they're always going to, they're always going to have the ears open to what Notre Dame wants because SEC doesn't want Notre Dame to leave their football independence. The no, SEC they don't. likes that. So they're going to always kind of go to bat for Notre Dame as well. Because they don't want them yeah. going to the Big Ten. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Um, I'll let somebody else get on the line, Greg. But Got I it. just kind of, I didn't, I didn't know if I'd make myself clear enough you did. a few months ago on that uh, stadium deal. But anyhow, have a great night. Beautiful, beautiful job, Steve. Appreciate it. Mr. Bearcat. <laughs> Beautiful call by Steve. Talk in Miami Stadium. All the things that are going against Miami. All the things that might be going for Miami. Radakovich, the athletic director. We're going to pop it up on the screen here. For those who are for those who are new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you get yourself notified anytime we come on live. We can be coming on live at any time. We could be coming on live early tomorrow morning. We could be, possibly, if Graham Neff makes some news, the athletic director, he's going to have a microphone in front of him, just like the athletic director of Miami had in front of him. Miami athletic director Dan Radakovich said, Miami is an interested observer with Florida State taking actions toward leaving the ACC. But right now, they're proud members of the ACC. Matt Baker, quote, Quoting Radical Kovic now, he had some interviews with some other newspapers after the press conference. This is what Radakovic, the athletic director, said as all things, as all these things continue to come up into the marketplace, as all these things continue to come up in the marketplace. What does he exactly mean by that? I have my uh, opinion. And what Florida State is looking to do, which is to leave the ACC and join the SEC and the Big Ten, will be very, very interested observers. 
So Miami not really taking a shot at Florida State. Miami really liking that Florida State is going out there, right? All these things continue to come up in the marketplace. Continue, continue. I, um, look, he didn't say much. In other words, if you total up, total up the number of words that Radakovich, Radakovich said, not much. But I think he said something. I think Miami is not going to be the aggressor, as, as we've reported over the last two, three, four, five, six months. The president of Miami isn't. He's not going to be the aggressor of this. But along with Clemson, they believe that the doors have not been shut on them when it comes to joining the SEC, potentially joining the SEC, the Big Ten. The doors have, of course, completely opened for them. But I think they've gotten enough interest in their third-party communications to be a little bit positive here. And I think Clemson, again, very interested to see what the athletic director says tomorrow morning because he's going to be in front of the microphone. The Gator Bowl, Clemson versus Kentucky. The question's going to be asked, what do you think about Florida State's actions? And Graham Neff is going to be prepared. He's talked about this, this whole thing before. He's going to say something. And I think, I believe, of course I don't know, but I'm just giving you my opinion, my speculation. I think he's going to be just a, even a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more pro-Florida State action. It wasn't like the Miami Athletic Director was pro-Florida State action. He was neutral, but he definitely wasn't negative, right? I think Graham Neff is going to be a little bit more pro-Florida State action than even Radakovich, Miami's athletic director. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Helmer Henderson, again, thank you for your generosity to the channel. How much of the value of North Carolina, Virginia is market demographics related to how much is basketball related? I think, of course, it's both, but it more it's more market. Markets still matter. Fresh demographics, market that's a virgin country to the SEC and the Big Ten. And it's not just, it's the spending money, the spending power of the demographics in North Carolina and Virginia. College, college sports, I, um, it's both, but the market, it's both. Market demographics is probably even a little bit more valuable than the, ba the basketball relation, basketball related value that's associated with North Carolina and Virginia. Arizona Wildcats scored touchdown. Wow. Jacob Cowing, that quarterback. Mm. Mm -mm. Arizona's going to cause problems next year in the Big 12. Anyways, um, yeah, so markets still matter. It's not everything. It's not everything. It's not everything, right? But it is as part of the equation. No question about it. Thank you for the super chat, Helmer. Appreciate it. Watch out for Arizona next year. Ha ha, I called it, Greg. Yeah, a lot of, boy. Trying to handicap the Big 12 next year. Look at what West Virginia just did. Nine win season. I've already I've already taken the L on Neil Brown. So I've already done that. Okay? I've already done that. Neil Brown shut me up and a whole lot of people up. Great season for West Virginia. They won nine games. He was on the hot seat. They got a little, they got that running back back there. Not C. Day Donaldson, but the other guy, White, who ran incredible the second half of the season, averaging 8.2 yards per rush. He got a little bit shut down yesterday, but he's going to have a, he's going to be all primed, ready to go next year. Garrett Green coming back for his senior season. West Virginia, I, how do you handicap the Big 12 next year? Utah, 
They're going to be tough. They are going to be tough next year. I don't know. It's going to be tough to handicap the Big 12. Uh, Zona is on fire right now. No question about it. Rutgers won. Congratulations to Shiano. Kirk Sharaka, the offensive coordinator. We got Rutgers right at the beginning of the year. We said Rutgers is going to go to a bowl game. We said under Kirk Sharaka, the offense would improve. They would be stable. The new offensive coordinator. We got that one right. Jordan H. Greg, if the market demographics, if it is market demographics, why is Virginia valued over Virginia Tech for the state of Virginia when Virginia Tech has a larger fan base in the same markets as Virginia? Well, Virginia, it has a larger fan base when it comes to football, which is the most important thing. But Virginia has that connection with North Carolina. Virginia is the bigger college. Virginia is, a, uh, they're not actually a bigger research university than Virginia Tech. I haven't checked the numbers in the last couple of years, but the last time I checked, Virginia Tech, actually, really good research university, Virginia Tech, actually had expenditures above Virginia. Um, it's just that Virginia is the bigger more connected, the bigger university, um, more of a power player than Virginia Tech, but more of that historic connection with North Carolina. But again, Jordan H., I don't really think what we have heard, what we reported on a month ago, Virginia Tech and Virginia are pretty entangled. So... We had a money perch, University of Virginia money perch, tell us that for Virginia to untangle themselves from Virginia Tech, it's going to be nearly impossible. It's going to take a lot of work. But politically, those schools are entangled. And it's not just the Attorney General of the state of Virginia. There's a whole bunch of other politicians. So um, if Florida State becomes successful in the courts, if they get a, a, a price point where they can leave the ACC, if there's a couple other schools that follow, the whole Virginia and Virginia Tech story is going to be massive. What's going to happen there? It's going to be big time. And I don't know, I mean, what we were told more than once, it's going to be very difficult for Virginia to unlock themselves for Virginia Tech. So if Virginia leaves, Virginia Tech, if they're tied to the hip, what does that do to the overall valuation of Virginia in Virginia Tech? How does that work out for the SEC? Would the SEC be interested in a North Carolina, Virginia, Virginia Tech, plus a fourth school? If the October proposal doesn't pass, in, at the North Carolina Board of Governors where North Carolina State isn't really tied at, at the hip of North Carolina. Would an SEC do a North Carolina, a Virginia, a Virginia Tech, and a Clemson? Would that satisfy ESPN? Would that satisfy the SEC presidents? Would that satisfy the boosters of the SEC? Would that satisfy the commissioner? Virginia, Virginia Tech, North Carolina, and a Clemson. Could that slip through? We're going to find out. We're going to find out. But Virginia, Virginia Tech, even though Virginia is a top target, that's going to have to take a back seat in the Holy Smokes Theater. They're not even in the first row. Even though Virginia, the state of Virginia, is highly valued, by both the SEC and the Big Ten, because of that entanglement, there's, there's a lot of work to do before we get to that part of the story. Great question.
Okay. Uh, I think we're going to close it up for the night. Um, I think we've been on the air for a couple hours. Again, I do apologize for the beginning of this show. We had quite a few issues, but I'm glad we're able to do this tonight. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us. Again, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you get yourself notified. Please, before you leave, smash the like button if you like the content. If you did not like the content, hit the thumbs down button and let me know in on X, formerly known as Twitter, or in the comments section, what we can do to improve your uh, experience here at College Football's YouTube channel. We appreciate you all coming in. And again, we dropped an early peak episode for early peak members yesterday morning on Cam and Ward. If you want to become an early peak member, just hit the join button. There's a link in the description below the video. Hit the join button. Become an early peak member. Lots of new members, lots of new members this month. We appreciate you all joining for becoming an early peak member. And of course, there's a link provided with a merchandise store, people buying uh, head on a swivel t-shirts, uh, our mugs, our cloak and dagger mug, cloak and dagger, cloak and dagger. There's a lot of cloak and dagger stuff going on right now as we speak in the ACC Holy Smokes Theater. We appreciate you all coming in. And again, tomorrow, we'll see what happens. Um, we're all eyes are on Graham Neff in what he, how he answers the question that's going to be put forward to him. What do you think about the actions of Florida State? We think, we believe that Graham Neff is going to be a little bit more aggressive than even Miami's athletic director Radakovich. So all eyes on Graham Neff. All eyes on Clemson for tomorrow morning at least. So buckle up, brace for impact. We're going to be covering it here at Peak Around the Corner. Until next time, from all of us at PATC, to all of you, please, please, you all take great care of each other. Thank you.